I'm Sam Mitchell, and these are my stories. Howdy, folks. Hope you're having a good day today. So for this episode, I figured I'd talk about meltdowns because meltdowns are big. And parents, just FYI, I think you need to listen to this episode because this is a major one for you guys because meltdowns are bad. I mean, they're very bad for us, but we just cannot help it. I mean, it's just a sensitivity thing that we cannot help. And we wish we could, but we just cannot. It's our brain's fault, and I'm not trying to blame us. I mean, I'm not trying to say it's your fault, but our brain cannot help us from thinking that way. I mean, it's just our, the way we think, and it's the process of our brain. So anyway, a meltdown is a scary and sad feeling fit that we feel, or what we throw, due to our senses being overhyped and overwhelmed. What I mean by this is, when our senses are overwhelmed and we feel overhyped, it's like, giddy, 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 giddy. We have meltdowns that can either be exciting or bad, mainly bad, but when we're just overwhelmed, we're just like, oh no, oh no, oh no. But we just feel very overwhelmed and we, it causes us to have a meltdown. And when we melt down, we're just sad and scared and frightened. I mean, we're just scared, man. That's all we are. We're just scared. I think we have a tough time with this because we do not like our senses messed up. I mean, we, I, mean I don't like my ears sensed up. I don't like my nose sensed up. I don't like my brain overhyped. I don't like my nose overhyped. I don't like my mouth overhyped. I mean, I just don't like being overwhelmed. And that causes us to melt down. Or when something fails. Or when a plan goes wrong. We all melt down. I mean, we just can't help it. I mean, we would like to help it, but we can't. And it's also, we're overwhelmed with our senses. I mean, and it's each sense that I mentioned earlier. I mean, I wish we could help it, but we just cannot. And I feel really bad, but we just cannot keep it from having a meltdown. I mean, I wish there was a switch we could just say, nope, no meltdown. But we cannot, unfortunately. But I think this is why we have a tough time with this as a whole. When we do have meltdowns, I feel like we shut ourselves from the world and us and even you guys and ourselves because when we have meltdowns, we're in our own little world and we cannot help it, but we just shut down. I mean, we're just like, the door's closed. Don't come in here. Do not disturb. But we just cannot help that and we just shut down from the world. I mean, we don't even know what's going on anymore. We're just like, oh, God, 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 God. Um, What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? We just don't know what to do at that moment and we just cannot function. Some cannot function at that moment. And we shut off from grandparents, shut off parents, shut off to cousins, to aunts, I mean, to family, to friends. I mean, we shut ourselves from everyone. And I mean, every single person in this world. And even us. I mean, we don't even know who we are anymore. We're scared. We just, we want to go curl up in a little ball and be like a little hamster. But we can't do that, obviously. But we're just so scared in that moment. And we just shut ourselves from us. And we just don't know what to do. And we're just like, oh, dear, dear. We just don't know who we are at that moment. And that's sad to say, but it's true. We don't know what we like to eat. We don't know what what we like to drink. We don't know what we like to do. We just don't know who we are. And we just don't know how to stop from shutting ourselves out from the world. Also, what happens when we shut ourselves down is we just want to be away from people and away from the world and basically go to heaven or go to a place where no one will know. Maybe go, like, hiding a secret lair or a secret science lab. We just want... To be somewhere where no one else is and have our little studio or our little studio or our maybe um, a home that we consider. And like I said, sometimes we cannot help having a meltdown due to a plan being screwed over. And it's one of our pet peeves. It's one of my pet peeves personally. And what I mean by this is sometimes we just cannot have a meltdown due to a plan messing up. Like if you take us to Wendy's and you're going to give us a frosty and you say that, then you're like, nope, we're not going anymore. We cannot help having that meltdown. I mean, I wish we could, but we just cannot help having that meltdown. Or when you say, hey, we're going to go to your friends and go see Jumanji, the next level. And then you're like, nope, we changed the movie. We're like, what? What happened here? Why are you doing this? And like I said earlier, I mean, we just cannot help having that meltdown. I mean, I know we don't have it all the time, but it's mainly in young ones. Mainly in young people have meltdowns when a plan screws up. I mean, I did that with a story I'll tell you about that is, I was planning to go to Lark Farm Ranch with some friends. Well, unfortunately, Mother Nature, your turn again, and it rained on us. Well, I had the meltdown, and we couldn't think of what to do. So then I was thinking, like I said, in 106, daily changes. But then I thought, wait a minute, bingo. And I said, Mr. Gaddy's. Okay, well, we did that. We had a blast. So, But we still could not help having that meltdown because it got screwed. I mean, from ages probably 1 to 10, we cannot help having that meltdown due to a plan being screwed up. I mean, as we get older, we'll probably progress. But when we're younger, we just cannot help it. I mean, I wish we could, but I think, though, that parents, you just have to help your child to the best of your ability. Also, we autistic ones don't only have meltdowns. We have tantrums. 
a tantrum is an outbreak where you fuss over something that you want. I mean, this one could be confusing with a meltdown because a meltdown is just an overhyped, overwhelmed, or sometimes that you just feel. But a but a tantrum is just like what a, a typical child does. It's like they're crying over a Hershey bar, and that's something you shouldn't do. But that's a tantrum. I mean, crying over a chair that you don't get to sit in, or they're crying over that they don't get to sleep in their parents' bedroom. I mean, it just depends, but that's what a tantrum is. That's the difference. Just meltdowns you can't help. A tantrum is just they're crying over something little. And I had tantrums, but it was mainly meltdowns. But I had several tantrums that I cannot remember to tell you guys about, and I wish I did. But I mainly had meltdowns. And the tantrums, though, it's just they're crying over something that they don't want or they want like a typical child. But it's hard to tell the difference. It seriously is because you don't know which one they're doing. I mean, one minute they could be having a meltdown, and then the next minute they're having a tantrum. I mean, you just got to tell based on your child's personalities and perspectives and your personality and your perspective. It all depends on if it's serious or not, too. You got to think of, like, are they crying over their best friend dying or are they crying over a Hershey bar? I mean, it just depends on what's important to you and what's important to them. I mean, it all depends on the situation, too. And maybe some of you parents could do is ask your child, question them, like, interrogate them a little bit. Be the Be a detective. Be like, what are you doing? Like, what's the situation? Why are you crying? And then the, they should answer you, and then you could be the boss and figure out, okay, let's assess here and be like, are they having a meltdown or a tantrum? You must decide that. And each parent could be different, but I think most parents are the same, but it, also, it all depends on your perspective because you're the parent, and remember that. And I think another reason why parents have a troubled time understanding the difference is because it seems like we are being whiny, but we are not. We autistic ones sometimes just do not know what to do, was well, something that we love just acts plumb stupid. And BJ, I did steal that one from you. So, haha, and sorry, bud. But not really. <laughs> but anyway, we autistic ones like something that we love to be pitch perfect and expect it to go well. I mean, when that podcast, like I said, in Daily Change got over it, I had a meltdown because I did not know what the heck to do. Because it was just plumb stupid that it got deleted. But like I said, we want it to be pitch perfect with something that we love. I mean, if a kid's drawing goes bad and he loves to draw... That could go completely wrong. He could have a meltdown over it. I mean, you guys may not have a meltdown. Our parents may not have meltdowns. But we might have a meltdown because it went wrong. And we're not... That's a meltdown. That's something that we love. And we're not whining. I mean, it may seem like it, but we're not. We are just really mad and frustrated and having a troubled time moving on and not holding our frustrations and holding our anger in that something that we love just did something completely dumb and screwed up the whole thing. Now, parents, there are ways to help meltdowns. Some strategies are reward them, maybe, when, but only reward them when, when only good things happen. I must stress that out. Only good. And this could help your child because if they are rewarded, they may be like, oh, okay. They're like, hey, if you calm down, we'll go get you a Frosty at Wendy's. He's like, ooh, ice cream. Yay. But that could help your child because, or something, you could reward something else. I mean, it can't be, like, expensive. It can't be, like, wrestling tickets, but... If you're warm with something small like a big beanbag chair, they'd be like, ooh, I gotta be comfortable. Yay. Or warm with money. I mean, don't bribe your child with money, of course, but if they're be like, okay, let's let's do this. Maybe, hey, John, I'll take you to McDonald's if you calm down. And be like, ooh, okay. But if you reward them, that might calm them down and, and then you can talk about it. I mean, yeah, it may be like, ugh, they were talking about it, great. But at least you could talk to them typical and not be like, you have to calm them down, and you can just talk to them typically while they're enjoying food or while they're enjoying their reward that they got. Another solution you can do is maybe give them some privacy because this one could help because even though that they're hyper and they're just, they want peace and quiet. I mean, they want time to just let it out. They want time to let that steam out and just feel safe and have no one around. So maybe instead of bothering them maybe give the child some privacy and then maybe after like 20 minutes be like okay are you calm down and if they're still not give them some more time i mean it may take them an hour or a day to calm down but at least they're calming down and their privacy and they feel safe and they don't have to be like okay they don't have to feel like they're curling up in a ball again but if you give them privacy this could help majorly and they'll do, calm down perfectly. I mean, they just need some time like all of you guys do. And I, and I mean, for real, think about it. We all need privacy sometimes. I need privacy. Family needs privacy. Everyone in this world needs privacy. I mean, if you don't need privacy, 
I don't understand how you're living then because I don't get how you can be around people all the time. But anyway, if you need privacy, it's fine. So give us the same thing. Everyone in this world needs privacy. Just give us the same thing that we deserve and earn because we just need it really bad. And we don't want to be around people at times because autistic people don't like people sometimes and do not want to be around them. And then when we're having a meltdown, we do not like people at that moment. So just do us a favor and give us some privacy. Please, please, please. Another solution you can do is this going to be a unique one. Acknowledge what your child wants without giving it to them. What I mean by this is if you tell them like, hey, Timmy, you got to calm down, buddy. I mean, I know you're upset over this, but I know you're upset over your toy breaking, but you got to calm down first before we can do anything. If you acknowledge your child, chances are they'll know that you care because when I have a meltdown and they're just like, meh, 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 and getting chewed on, I feel like they don't care anymore. I don't feel like the parents care about the situation. And I want them to care about my things too, just like I care about th- their things too sometimes. But we want to feel acknowledged. We want our meltdowns to be not acknowledged, but not for attention. But we want it to be acknowledged for help. All we're asking for when we have a meltdown is help. And we want it to be acknowledged. And we want to know that, hey, we're having a meltdown. Don't give us attention, but please help and please care for us. And tell us what we can do. We just want help and we want it to be acknowledged, but in a different way. And when it does get acknowledged, we'll, we'll stop having a meltdown and crying and we'll listen. And then... Because we know that you care, that makes us feel safe. We know that you care. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know how to ever thank you, but at least we know you care. And we will listen now because you've shown me the respect that I deserve. Now I'll show you the respect I deserve. It's kind of like a negotiation or a little, yeah, it's like a little negotiation. You give me the respect, I give you the respect. I mean, that's what you want and that's what you, you shall receive. A final solution that I have for you parents is distract, distract, distract. And I mean, this is a major solution because if you distract them, chances are they may move on and be like, oh, what the heck was I talking about anyway? And they'll move on. I mean, if you distract them and just talk about their strengths and what they love to do instead of focus on the negative, that might calm them down a little bit. And then when it comes time, you could try to talk to them about it again. Now they may be like, nope, nope, and shut down again. But if you talked about their favorites for a while... They might calm down and just, and they'll stress all this, go, ah, and they'll breathe and smell roses, but you got to give them time. But if you distract them, it might take less time and they'll move on more sooner. And something else I want to say is not all meltdowns are the same and they're not trying to trick you because what I mean by this is not all meltdowns are the same. Some are just like, boom, and like extroverted and they're like, (laughs) but some are just like introverted and they're just like. Outside the fire on the inside, it's like it's like a big volcano erupting, and it's not a good eruption. I mean, it's like people getting killed. I mean, people are going in lava. I mean, it's going crazy out there, man. But it, that's what it feels like. It feels like like not all meltdowns are the same. I mean, they're external and internal. And maybe a child's having one, and that's the one you see at Walmart typically. And I think you know what I mean by that, parents. And you see a lot of that at Walmart. But anyway. That's what you see a lot of, but internal meltdowns, that's what I have. That's what I mainly have. I mean, you don't see me on the outside. I mean, what you see on the outside is me coming to school or wherever I'm going, having a bright smile on my face and saying cheese or cheese. But an internal meltdown, but what you see inside, it's like ding, 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 bam. I mean, it's just like eruption and it's like I'm going to scream at people. I mean, I haven't screamed at a person, thank God, but I want to, but I will not, of course, because I'm so respectful and... And I need, I need to, the respect that I deserve. And I was, will show it to you. But anyway, when those meltdowns are not the same at all. And we're not trying to trick you either. Because we're not trying to be like, we're not trying to trick you and be like, hee hee, we're going to get a Hershey bar. Ha ha ha, I'm going to get this for free. But that's not us. I mean, we're, we're seriously feeling this. I mean, this is a serious feeling. It's not like we're trying to trick you at all. 0% tricking, I promise you that. But if you think you're tricking, or it's tricking... You're not a good parent, honestly. I think you should put that kid up for adoption. But if you seriously get into that child's mind and it's an internal meltdown or even an external, that is what a good parent does and it will help them. And and you'll understand it a lot better and they'll understand you a lot better. Because like I said, they're not trying to trick you. I promise you. This is a serious feeling that you must address together as a child and a mother or a child and whatever relative that you are. Now... There are six stages to an autistic meltdown. Now, I'm going to show you a video below and click the video for more information. 
but I shall briefly describe you. So the first one is calm. So this is the one where an autistic gets skipping down the hallway like la 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 la. But and it's just like normal. It's like hey dude, how you doing? Hey Mrs. Turpin, how you doing? Or hey Mrs. Turpin, how you doing? Or hey Mrs. Table, how you doing? Or they're like saying to their back, like, hey Josh, how you doing? Or hey Mrs. Cabinet, how you doing? They're just they're just normal and they feel just at ease. They just feel okay and just like ready to go on and have a great day and just just mind their own beeswax. And, but the next stage is triggers. Like if I'm like throwing a pen at someone who has autism, they're like, and they melt down because of it. That's a trigger. That's like they're shaking up. That's when the volcano is about ready to go and it's building up. But the next day is agitation. It's like, and it keeps going on, and this thing keeps going, and their mind's like, agitation, 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 agitation. It's like, nope, not going to Walmart, not going to Walmart. Mm, mm, cry, cry, cry. But it's kind of like that sort of feeling, and it's probably wasn't the best description, but that's what it is. I mean, it's agitation. We're just really ag- aggravated at this thing, and we're just mad. And then stage four, it goes to crafts and crafts, because it, the next stage is a meltdown, because that's when we go, and it explodes like crazy and that's when we're like we're done we're crying bye bye leave us alone and then the fifth stage this stage is the i call it the come back into society phase that's the phase where we find us like ah and we're just smelling roses and we're trying to be back into society and realize oh i'm in public crap i gotta gotta act natural here but that's the come back into society phase and i'll get into that more later but then the next phase, this is an interesting phase, the final phase is start over. Because when you're done having that meltdown, you can start over. You can start the conversation over, and you can start over like that meltdown never actually happened. Now, with stage five, stage five is the hardest to do because I sometimes had to be away from public because I could not go come back into society. Stage five is seriously the hardest, and I can when I say that. And it might take a while for us to complete stage five. But there are some solutions we how we can complete stage five. Some solutions are maybe count to 10. Like if you're like one, two, three, four, five, and like so on, then we're just like, okay, after those 10 seconds, we're done. We just passed the come back into society. And that's an also not an autistic strategy, though. That's an anger management strategy because this goes a lot with anger management. So if you have anger management and you're autistic, this might be a good solution. Another solution you can do is deep breaths. Just go... Ah, ah, and that doesn't help with everyone, but that can help with some. I mean, sometimes deep breaths are just like an overwhelmness feels like, uh -uh. and it's just like overwhelmness. But if we, some people who go to deep breaths, they're just like, ah, now that doesn't help with me personally, but some, with some person who has autism and it's a mild situation, deep breaths could help them take deep breaths for a while. Another solution that can help and happen, and this is my favorite solution and what I use is go to a happy place or a home. What I mean by this is maybe for when you're having a meltdown, just stop, close your eyes, and go to your happy place. And people's happy places are different. It could be a baseball stadium where your happy place is. It could be a bowling alley. It could be a studio like this. Close your eyes and you envision that, then that might help you. And a home, maybe go to a spot that you consider a home, like this studio. I know I have a house, but this studio is like my second home. Or maybe you go to a bowling alley that you consider home. Or maybe you work at a farm. Maybe you consider that your second home. Maybe go to a place that you call home and just sit down there and maybe do some yoga and meditate if you have to. And the best part with this solution is your happy place doesn't have to be real. Maybe you can make it up. Maybe you can, it, you can make it up and it could be in the world Jumanji. Or maybe you, your happy place could be working for Thanos. Or maybe... Your happy place could just be creative in your way. Maybe, I know, your happy place could be in the world of Minecraft. That would never be my happy place. I'd probably be the first one shot in a survival mode or get killed by a pig if, if the pigs could kill you. But anyway, my point is just go to a happy place that is real or fake. It doesn't matter. Just go to a happy place and calm down there. And that would be in your head too, probably. The final solution that you could do for stage five is ask to not be bothered or give the person space. Because after a meltdown, we all want space. And I mean anyone who's had a trauma or just has some bad go happen. A lot of things, when we have meltdowns, go bad to us. Okay, we want space. We want some time away from you. Now, that space might be a week or so. It could be longer than you expect. But after a while, that probably shouldn't. If it's for a year, then get some help. But anyway, 
If you need space, that's okay. We all need some space. But give that autistic person a lot, and I mean a lot, of space. Because that will help them tremendously. Now, parents, something else you need to know is when young ones have a tantrum and they say they'll try to improve, then they will. I mean, it typically happens. But when it's a meltdown, then they do not improve or something that important. Like when you guys, hey, Timmy, can you improve on your meltdowns a little bit? Okay, they will not. They'll flat out refuse to because we cannot control that we feel the loss of something. Because if it's a meltdown, feel loss. We can't help that. I mean, we feel the loss of anything. Like, it's not just the loss of someone dying. It's the loss of something that means to us. Something that could be as simple as a podcast episode or a drawing that means to us or a cake ruin. It just depends on that person. So don't tell us to improve on our meltdowns because maybe we'll destroy your things and then we'll see how you like it. But the point is don't tell us to control our meltdowns or to improve on our meltdowns because it's not going to happen probably likely in the young one's age because they can't help it. They can't help feeling the loss of something because maybe put yourself in our shoes. You guys feel lost just like us, but think about it as us. We feel a lot more losses than you guys do. And not only young ones have meltdowns though. Teens sometimes do have meltdowns, but it doesn't happen often. But when they do, as long as they can function, they just let them let it out because we all have meltdowns sometimes. But now if they are not functioning or you're in public, then you need to take it in the car and let them let out their system because a meltdown in a young one's age or a teen's age could happen at any moment. Maybe one minute they're happy and then with a snap of their fingers, boom, they're having a meltdown. So if you're in public, then maybe then take them to the car and just let them let them let it out and just let the steam go rolling. But and then if they're not functioning, then you need to just do your thing of what to do and take probably take them home. And I know it sounds awful to do, but that's probably the best case. Or take them somewhere private and let them roll the steam out as they as they all say. But yeah, the point is, teens do have meltdowns sometimes, but they can probably control it and function more likely. But if they're not. Just take them somewhere private and have them roll the steam out. Now, certain things can cause meltdowns. Some examples that cause meltdowns are things get out of order. If things get out of order, chances are, and there's no structure, they're going to probably freak out and have a meltdown, and mainly likely in school. Or if they have, this is where our artistic OCD kicks in, because if we're, something's not organized, then we probably have a meltdown. And there's an example for me like that, because I still do this, and I'm a dork for doing it, but I really don't care. But anyway, each Christmas, I always like to line up my presents presents, and like from the order I get them to the, the last I got. And when I was younger, if they got messed up, I would have meltdown and be like, why would you do that? Why? Why? I'm mad at you. But as I get older, it's what now, whatever. But when I was younger, if they got out of order, phew, it was not a good Christmas. And St. Nicholas couldn't even save me probably from it, if, I, that, if that's a good way to put it. Another thing thing that can cause meltdowns spontaneous noises because because for example we're just walking down the hallway like do 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 next thing you know we hear a boom and chances are we're just like like we're just cover our ears like what the crap and then we have a meltdown i mean another example could be when i hear a car horn go honk and that makes me mad it's like i probably will cuss you out let's put it that way and i will not say the words i say on this podcast but anyway if i hear a spontaneous noise that's really loud and i don't like chances are i'm gonna have a meltdown and I'm probably not as much now, but when I was younger, if I got if someone if I heard a boom or a car horn honk, then I'd probably have a meltdown. But now I can c- control it, so we're all good. Another thing that can cause a meltdown is losing something or that's gone forever. Because if something happens and all of a sudden it's like abracadabra and the chair's gone, chances are I might have a meltdown because I lost my favorite chair. Or when I lose a water bottle and I'm really thirsty, I might have a I might complain, but I may, I'm not going to have a meltdown over it, but I'll probably still complain because I'm a teenager and I'm kind of a prince or a king. But anyway, like I said, if you lose something, then chances are they may have a meltdown because if you lose their wallet, they're going to have a meltdown. They'll probably be mad at you for a while. If you lose their money, chances are they'll probably be mad at you. Or if they lose their money, chances are they might have a meltdown. Or if they even lose their cell phone, they might have a meltdown. It just depends on how valuable it is and how valuable it is to them and in the real world, how valuable it is to another person if they took it. Another thing that can cause us to have a meltdown is yelling. And what I mean by this is if we yell like, hey! or like, wake up, then chances are then that's going to have us to have a meltdown because we're scared. And that's going to cause our senses and our overwhelm us to feel like, crap, he's on to me. He's mad. I'm scared right now. And we just feel very scared. We want to curl up in a blanket and we want to cry basically. But when someone yells and it's just like a loud pitch, like, God dang it! 
and it's like that type, then chances are we're going to be scared and probably want to curl up in a bar ball. Now, some people do yell in this world, and they are old yellers. Not the dog old yeller, but just an old yeller. And, and I mean by old people yellers. But that's something we have to deal with. But if that's going to, if it helps you to bring earplugs, and just bring the god dang earplugs. Let's put it that way. Another thing that can cause mouth is people's mistakes that they make. Because, for an example, if someone makes a mistake that they're sitting in a chair and they sit in the bed and that's bothering a young ones, chances are they may have a meltdown because you li- we take that as lying. When you guys make a mistake, autistic people take that as lying. And we don't mean to, but that's just how we feel, taking it as a lie. And we don't want to feel like that, but we may feel like your mistake is a lie to us. And we feel backstabbed in the back, but we just feel very lied to. And when you guys make that mistake and you guys like, we're just like, you lie to me. And we just want to be like, get away from me. Get away. I don't, I'm not dealing with this crap anymore. But when you make that mistake, we just don't trust you anymore. And we just take it as lying. But I'm working on it. But we just need to realize that it's your mistake and mistakes happen. Speaking of lying, some that can, another thing that can cause meltdowns is you liars out there. Because we don't like being lied to. I mean, if you take advantages of, of us... Chances are we're going to have a meltdown because we are not going to be happy people if you lie. That's the one thing I cannot stand in this world. Oh, and I think you guys know that. It just it even bothers me talking about it sometimes because I hate liars. I hate them, man. You're a thief if you lie. And when you lie to us, we, we feel taken advantage of. And we don't know what to do because we feel like vulnerable targets. And we want to have a meltdown because we feel vulnerable and just weak. And... We're not really, but we just feel weak at that time and just feel pathetic. Another thing that can cause a meltdown is being uncomfortable. What I mean by this is if we feel uncomfortable, the chances are we're going to have a meltdown because two things cause meltdowns more in autistic people than than I know. One is something that they lose over something that they love. Two, being uncomfortable because if I, because I don't like tags in my shirt. If I have a tag in my shirt, chances are I'm going to have a meltdown because I hate tags in my darn shirt. And I don't know why they're there anyway. I guess it's the way of making money. But anyway, if it, we're uncomfortable, like if someone sits on a cinder block and they're uncomfortable, chances are they're going to have a meltdown. Or if they sit on a hay bale and they don't like it, chance, chances are they're going to have a meltdown. Just make the make sure the autistic person feels comfortable. And I mean, if that means it includes them getting a special chair, then that's what it includes. Just make sure an autistic person is comfortable no matter what the circumstances are. Another thing that can cause us to have a meltdown is sicknesses because... We all like being sick. I mean, if we're just like, <laughs> or like, <laughs> or like, <laughs> and we're just like being really, and we're just sick. I mean, we hate being sick because we're so, autistic people are typically busy and we'd rather just be up and free and just feel freedom. But when we're sick on that bed and we just feel like, and feel like we're dying, we basically feel like people that were, People in history that they were just having bad times, like slaves. I probably shouldn't have said that, but that's just a good example because we that's what we feel like. We feel like we're, we're being beaten down to the core, and we don't mean to feel like that, but that's just how we feel. But when we feel sick, we want to have a meltdown because we're just really mad that the sickness came to us, and we want to cry basically the whole entire day. Now, I know that's not acceptable, but when you're sick, the best thing you do is just sleep it off, and that way you just don't cry or really give a crap. A final thing that, that can lead us to having a meltdown is unfairness. What I mean by this is if some happens an unfair or favoritism, it makes me sick to my stomach. And I want to go puke and go hula, hula, even more because if it's unfair, then chances are they're going to be like, what the heck? Autistic people are going to be confused if you're not playing fair. I mean, if you play fair and you're a cheater, then you're a thief and you're a liar. I don't even like liars, like I said. But the point is, if you play unfair then chances are they're going to have a meltdown because they're going to be confused and they're going to feel like they're at the bottom of the food chain and they're not going to feel like they're necessary in this world and they may commit suicide. I mean, you don't know that, but that could happen. And I'm just thinking about that person who doesn't feel like they are they have no friends and just feel lonely in this world and just feel like there's nothing in this world for them. Now, parents, another thing you need to do is keep your cool because I know it's going to be hard to do sometimes because you just need to be like, like choke slam the kid, but... And be like, strangle them. Be like, Timmy, knock it off, knock it off. But I know we can't. That's not the thing to do because your child will hate you and won't, and will probably run away from your house. So if you want to keep your child, keep your cool. Let's put it that way. 
So let's put it this way. Keep calm and help your child. That's a little joke there. But anyway, some ideas that you could do to keep your calm could be assess the situation and ask this to yourself. What can I do to help? Because you need to think about it for real. You need to analyze what's the situation here, what's going on, and think. What can I do to help? Because maybe the best thing to do is leave it alone because maybe that situation is not that important. Or maybe you do need to assess it and be like, okay, Johnny, what can I do to help you? And Johnny may still have that meltdown, but if you need to leave him alone, leave him alone. You just got to assess the situation and then ask yourself, what can I do to help you and help myself? Another thing you can do is talk to them calmly because if you, now don't baby him. Don't be like, aw, what's the matter, Timmy? Are you okay? Don't be like that. Be like, okay, now Johnny, here's what we need to do. Now that's calmly. Don't, don't yell at him and be like, and, but be, be, but just talk to him calmly and just try to co cooperate with them and help them. Be the therapist at that moment. Be a really good therapist. And because I use my mom, I think she's a good therapist. And look at her. She's helped me pretty well. So maybe instead of being mean to your son, be a therapist and help. Because that's all we want is just some help, man. Another thing you can do is give them plan Bs. Because this one, but this one may not work. Because remember, at my way or the highway, we do not like plan Bs. But if it's a plan B that we like, then we'll take it. I mean... Plan Bs sometimes work and they don't work. It just depends on the situation and what, how we, well we like it. But in some cases, and most cases, it actually can work. But we'll listen to it, but we may not like it. So we may continue meltdowning. Is that even a word, meltdowning? Well, now I just made it a word. But anyway, if you give us a Plan B and it's a good Plan B, then we'll take it. So just think about Plan Bs no matter how much we disregard your other Plan Bs. Another thing you can do, and this is not my favorite situation, and oh, I hate having this conversation, but... Talk about what we can control, what we cannot control. What I mean by this is if I want to think, I want to give a shout out to Miss Sue right now because she did talk about this with me, but it doesn't help me the most, but I appreciate her efforts. So thank you, Miss Sue, for trying. But anyway, this talk can help a child because there are some things in this world that we can control. Like we can control ourselves. We control our attitudes. We can control what time we go to bed. Heck, we can even control what time we take a shower. And I hope you know what time we shower because of your hygiene. But anyway, there's some things that we cannot control. Like, we cannot control the weather. We cannot control other people. I mean, we had to have that talk. And I hate having that talk because I wish we could, we could control everything. But we can't, unfortunately. But anyway, if we have that talk, there's a chance, though, that this talk could help a person. They'd be like, oh, okay, I get it now. And be like, and they may turn that light bulb on. Another thing you can do is stand your ground. Now, not only do... Autistic people usually sometimes use My Way the Highway, but parents, you get to use My Way the Highway. Little reverse psychology trick, so, whoa well, me, dab. But anyway, as I was saying, we, um, parents can use My Way the Highway too, because it's like, Jimmy, you're doing it, or you're getting punched, because they can use, like, Timmy, you're doing it my way, or you're gonna go down the highway, bud, pick your choice. And you have to stand your ground, because if it's important to them, chances are that autistic person will be like, crap, I just have to do it this way. I don't want to, but it needs to be done. So, parents, if you stand your ground and be firm, don't yell at them, but be firm, then they'll listen to you. And chances are they'll probably go your way. But sometimes they do go the highway and they do have to be punished, which is unfortunate. But I did do that a little bit, but not as much anymore. But if you stand your ground, though, they'll go your way. If you explain it, though, make sure you explain your way, though, because if you explain it, chances are they'll even chances are they'll even go more your way, and you maybe even like your way. You just need to explain it, and hopefully convince them, and they'll hopefully take it, take it, and like it. Now, if you try all these solutions, then your last resort would be psychiatrist or get some professional help, because there are people in this world who can help people that are autism over meltdowns, because. They're professionally trained. They could say something, and they'd be like, oh, okay. And then you never know. That counselor could be a mentor to them. Or someone from a mental hospital could be a, a mentor to them. If that is the last resort, then just go for it. And make sure, though, they agree. Because they don't like it, and they're probably not going to do it. But if you have to do it, then you'll have to do it. But try all these words. This is only a last resort. Make sure, though, you just don't go to... Don't be like, oh, we're going to go see a psychiatr psychiatrist. Or we're going to go see Dr. Stewart. But just give them a chance before you get them outside help because counseling to me is a little embarrassing. But if it's not to you guys, great. Then go get the help. But to an autistic person, it can be embarrassing because they feel like they failed their parents. But I didn't. And my parents helped me, I thank God. But 
Only use that as a last resort, please, because they will feel like they failed you, and they don't want to be like that. Just make sure you give them the shot that they deserve. Now, if your child does have a meltdown in public, like I said earlier, I want you to first do the first step, but don't be ashamed, because it happens. We all, it all happens. I mean, they can't help it. And if people stare at you, first of all, they're mean, and second of all, they don't know what it's like to raise an autistic person. So maybe they should raise Timmy or that autistic child instead, and then we'll see who's real, who's talking. But anyway, if they stare at you, don't be ashamed because they cannot help it, and we cannot help having that meltdown. And just do your best. Just do the best to your ability to try to cope with the situation because it will happen if you have a child with autism. I guarantee it will happen. But do your best to cope with it and help them and just help them through this th- through this situation and ignore the stares. Just pretend that people aren't around because it might help. And even though you're getting those mean, nasty-looking stares, you're not you're not staring at your child, thankfully, and you're helping. And just ignore those people who are Raised because every person who raised an autistic child deserves a bow in my eyes and some special credit. With meltdowns, the one thing that helps me and my parents is resources. Because, because they think about it, for real though, if you have a child with autism and they're younger, maybe bring them their favorite toy. And chances are they may calm down in public or in the car. Now if it's a teenager, maybe if they're having a meltdown, maybe supply them with resources that they like. Maybe supply them with the phone. Maybe supply them with a fidget spinner. Just give them resources, give them supplies that could help them. And it may not be the best thing to lean on, but it could help them in that moment. It can help them, and after they're using their toy or their thing or their resource, then then it's time to talk about it. But in that meltdown moment, maybe give them some resource because it could help. And they'll feel like they're the only one being bothered and people aren't paying attention to them. But if you give them the resources also then chances are they'll calm down. So just make sure you give some, the child resources and let them do their thing for a while with whatever resource it is. Now, parents, I finally must warn you, if meltdowns get too bad for your safety, then seek some professional help, which might mean having the child stay somewhere else because meltdowns can get severe. And for proof, I have a video below that shows a child in Australia having a meltdown. And I was scared for the parents and all... And those parents deserve extremely good props. That's all I'm going to say because you guys need to see this. No, actually, no, you don't need to see it. You need to experience it. In conclusion, when we have meltdowns, we are not being moaners and not whining around and being big crybabies. We just want help and learn how to control ourselves and learn how to be calm and function properly when we're mad in public. And also, meltdowns are an extreme bad feeling that, but is a feeling that, we need to address more often. And it does get addressed. It does sometimes. But it doesn't get addressed enough. And that's really frustrating. We still get the stares at Walmart. And we still have to be excused of the public when we go to, to the cars. So next time, people, when you're in public and you see a child meltdown, instead of giving them those dirty looks, why don't you help them instead and help the parents? Well, that'll be all for us today. And I hope you learned something about meltdowns. And I want you to go help an autistic child with a meltdown. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Please tune in for another episode coming in very soon. I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble. Thank you very much.